Hi and welcome to the second part of this Planet Earth Blender 2.8 tutorial. So let's open up this folder. Inside this folder, we'll click on version 5. That's the last version we worked on. I'm just going to turn on this the key recorder here, the screencast keys, so that anyone wants to see the keys, they can see them on the side here. Let's click on the render view up here and we'll wait for it the render to show in the viewport. And here we can see the planet Earth. And these stars look a bit flat in the background, so I want to give them a bit of a curve. So we can easily do that by clicking on the star background here, going into the shading, and inside the shading settings, you want to zoom into this orange node here, the image node, and then in the flat option here, you want to select sphere, and it's just going to kind of bend the background a little bit, and it kind of looks like the planet, the stars are moving away rather than some sort of flat trajectory um, or flat image in the background. I want to scale this background a little bit because you can see the camera, this little box here, the dotted line, that's the camera. And we want to scale it out because we might want to rotate this camera a little bit and it's going to cause a problem if this background is not big enough. So let's click on the background, press S to scale and scale it out a little bit more so we've got a bit more space uh, here between the camera. So the first thing we want to do is set our keyframes. I'm going to set them to 400. So we're going to use 400 keyframes and let's see. So you can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel and then you can middle mouse click to just get the first frame and the frame 400 here and go to the uh, output settings here and the output settings we're going to set it to 30 frames a second let's go to let's click on the planet earth so this is the planet earth and we're going to rotate that first so let's hit the record button and click on planet earth and then go to the object data and we want to press the letter i on the rotation here we don't really need location keyframes because it's going to be in a static place so location is not important, it's rotation that we need. And let's press this button here that pushes us right to the end of the last keyframe or the last frame here and press the letter I again. And then we can just rotate this. Right now it's set to minus 98. So we want to keep rotating and I believe the planet should be rotating this direction anti-clockwise for it to be factually correct. So let's just rotate it a little bit. Let's go back, let's see. This is the correct rotation for the planet. If you rotate it the other way, then in theory it's actually incorrect um, from what I've read or what I understand. And that's 244 degrees, so we want to set this to around 180. That's too much rotation. You can see when we click play, it's rotating quite fast. We don't want it to rotate that fast. The planet doesn't rotate that fast, and it looks a bit rubbish if it's too fast. So we will probably reduce that rotation again. It's on minus 98, so let's set it to 90. Um, so do about 180 degree turn, and it will be quite slow. Even this, I think, is too fast, the rotation. So let's pause it and go to the last keyframe. It's this keyframe, we're adjusting the rotation. So we'll set it to around 45 degrees, and I think that sort of speed is probably about right. Now you can see when it starts, it starts slow. Uh, it kind of speeds up. It's got like this sort of curve in the um, in the actual keyframes to show that it should start slower and then sort of fade off and it will start to slow down while it gets to the end. We don't want that. So let's go to the first keyframe. Let's, um, let's see. We'll go to this option here, click here, and we need to go to the graph editor. And inside the graph editor, let's zoom out a little bit and click on the first keyframe here, click on this first keyframe and then press the letter T and then set it to linear here, linear. And that will just make it go in a flat straight line. So if we go back to our 3D viewport now and click play, it won't do this like gradually speeding up and gradually slowing down at the end. It will just be a consistent rotation of um, consistent rotation without slowing down and speeding up. That's what we want. We just want it to spin at a consistent rate. Now, what would be nice if the clouds rotated slightly faster, right? So if we go to, if we just copy this value here, uh, what is it? Minus 98, whatever it is, minus 98.1 and go to the clouds. Let's turn off the record button a second and set the cloud Z in the Z rotation to the same value, minus 98.1 uh, and then hit the record button. We'll go to the rotation here for the clouds and press the letter I and then go to the last keyframe and press the letter I as well. And if we look at the Earth, we finished on 45 degrees. So we're gonna set this to something like uh, 25 degrees. Or maybe we should have the clouds move a bit faster, right? 
So the clouds will be rotating up slightly faster than, than the planet Earth. So let's set it to 60. So in theory, um, the clouds might... See, the clouds are starting slowly and, and gradually speeding up. So let's untick the record button. Let's go... Let's click on the clouds here. Go back into the graph editor. And click on the first keyframe. And then press the letter T and set that to linear as well. So then it will just be straight as well in terms of you can see this is the the keyframes here so it's just a nice straight line um if you press the letter t and then do something like bezier then it's going to slowly speed up and then slow down at the end so it's going to be like gradual we don't want that we want it to be linear constant straight so let's go to the 3d viewport and if we click play now we should see the clouds are moving slightly faster than the planet earth and that's kind of the effect that i wanted maybe that's not even fast enough uh, it doesn't really give that illusion of that they're moving fast enough. So let's set it to like 180. Uh, we need to turn on the record button. Make sure you turn it on when you change settings in here. If it highlights orange like that, that means it hasn't accepted that value uh, because the record button was off. So if we click play now, we can see the clouds are moving faster. Uh, that looks a bit iffy. I think that's a bit too fast. So we set it to 180. It was on, let's set it to like uh, 90. Let's try that. So I think that's okay. The clouds are moving a little bit quicker than the planet. I think it gives a good illusion. Let's turn off our overlay and then we can kind of see what's going on here. And I think that will be okay. So let's just move to a keyframe like here. Let's pause it and at around 300. Let's set it to around 300. This keyframe, let's press F12. And we can see what that render looks like. So it's still looking good. Um, Let's go back a few keyframes to here and press F12. And that one looks good as well. Sometimes in the viewport, it might look a bit iffy around the edge here, but when you actually render it out, it looks okay. You can see it's a bit sort of jagged here. It's not quite clean, uh, but that should fix itself after um, you render it out. So let's turn off the record button and let's just check our output. It's 128, that should be fine. So really we just want to animate a camera now. So let's click on the camera and let's hit the record button and let's go to the object data here and press I for the location and I for the rotation. And let's go to the very last keyframe and press I for rotation and I for uh, the location, right? So press the letter I. That inserts keyframes for the rotation and the location. So now this orange line down here represents that nothing has actually changed between this first keyframe and the last keyframe because we haven't moved the camera yet, right? Which is true. So that's why it's orange like this. It's just saying blend the same. Well, you haven't actually done anything. First keyframe, last keyframe, camera is in the same place. That's okay. We'll click on the camera and then we need to decide what we're going to do. So I think the first thing we'll do is go to like keyframe 120. We're running at three, 30 frames a second, so 120 would be three, six, nine, twelve, four seconds. So I think that's a bit too much. Let's set it down to around three seconds, 90. And we'll press the letter I and the letter I here for keyframes. So you can see there's another little yellow dot that represents that keyframe. Let's go to the very first frame. Now we can make an adjustment to the camera. And if you go to edit preferences, go into key map here and type in fly, F-L-Y, and then on this option here, you want to click here and press shift key and F, shift and F key. That will be the hot key for this particular option. And now when you go into the viewport and press shift and F, you can rotate the mouse wheel forward. Just a couple of clicks on the rotation and it will move the, the camera forward. So you want to move it forward until we get a small gap at the top here and a small gap at the bottom. That should be quite even, but again, this is your animation, so it's entirely your choice. And we want to rotate this camera. So let's press R to rotate and we want to rotate it. Let's turn on our overlays. It's worth turning on the overlay sometimes because you can see this red line and that red line represents X. So you want to press R and then X and then we can rotate the planet to, let's say around here. And then we just want to move it slightly. So we're going to grab the camera, press G to grab it and then just try and get the planet back into the center somewhere like around here. Now, if we click play, we'll see it will rotate outwards like this at an angle. And that's kind of the, the basic sort of effect I want, right? Like the 
planets rotating outwards like this. And then we can decide what we do between this keyframe and this keyframe. So I think 400 minus 90 will be 310. So let's go to frame 310 and let's set a keyframe here and here. So we set a keyframe here and between these keyframes, nothing much is happening. So let's go to the last keyframe and work out what we want to do at the end. Now we rotated it this way. So maybe we'll rotate it the opposite direction. So what we'll do is press um, R to rotate, then X, and we're going to rotate it this way, slightly, not a lot, around this much. It's so around, uh, yeah, just kind of rotate it a little bit. Then press G to grab it and try and center it out again. And what we want to do is press Shift and F, and we want to zoom back in again. So you roll the mouse wheel up by pressing Shift F first, and then roll the mouse wheel forwards, right, the mouse wheel, and then press G to grab it just try and get it centered out again somewhere something like this and now our planet will kind of do this right and then we can decide what we want to do in between these keyframes we might just leave it static we don't need to do anything we don't have to do something but um let's see uh maybe at around frame 200 what we could do uh let's see I think what we will actually do is um, let's see let's go to frame 200 press the letter I and press the letter I here and what we're going to do is just grab the camera so we press in fact we could probably just move it on the Z right so let's move it upwards here so we're gonna look a little bit we're gonna be kind of below the, the planet a little bit the camera and then we want to rotate it on the x-axis uh, upwards and then bring it down again so it's going to kind of have this movement now this slight movement here but then it's going to move backwards we don't want it to move back to the same position here so on this keyframe we need to just understand what the data is so we move the z the x and the z right so copy this value here select it press ctrl c to copy and then you can click this button here to go to the next keyframe and paste that, paste in that value. And then we need to go back a keyframe to click this one. So it takes you back to keyframe 200, copy this value for the rotation, and then go forward to this keyframe and paste in that value. And now between those two keyframes, you're gonna get some consistency, right? And you get this bit of rotation and then it will fly off like this. So I think that's okay. <clears throat> I think what we can do maybe is on this keyframe, it's just move it slightly more so between these two frames there is something happening rather than it being very very static so what we can do now is uh let's see let's let's um move the camera let's move the z index this way the z location and let's just rotate it a bit more and try and get it towards the center somewhere like here so there's a bit of movement throughout the animation rather than being very static i think it'll be better um what we do is go to the first keyframe here and let's just go to file save as and save this as version 6 and we'll click on the camera go to the camera settings and click on depth of field and click on this drop down and then the distance the focal distance uh, press the letter i here the letter i make sure the record button is on and press the letter i here and then click on this button to take you to the keyframe 90 and press the letter I here. Then skip forward to 310 and press the letter I on the focal distance and then skip forward again on frame 400, press the letter I. So you've got the keyframe set for the focal distance. Let's go back to the very first keyframe and set this value to 0 0.4. So it's gonna be quite blurred out like this. And then go to the very last keyframe and set that to 0 0.4. And it's gonna blur out like this. So if we go back to the first frame, untick the record button, click play. It will kind of blur and then focus in and you see the planet spinning. You'll have a bit of movement inside of uh, the animation here. The planet will move a little bit and then it's gonna rotate out and blur away. And then you can go into post-production. You can move this into uh, something like DaVinci Resolve and do some other things with the animation. You can do whatever you want. You can extend the keyframes and do some other work. But you've got a good understanding of how this is done now. So really all we've got to do now is just render out the keyframes. So 
I'm quite happy with what we've done so far. So we'll go to File, Save. Let's go to the Output Settings, Output here. And let's click on the PNG option and set it to AVI JPEG. And we'll leave it on RGB, 90% compression is fine. Let's click on the Output folder. We'll go to the Planet Earth folder on our desktop. And we'll click Accept. And then press Control and F12. Okay, so Blend has finished rendering out all of the 400 frames. This is our very last frame. We can close this. And let's just go to File, Save and Minimize. So inside of our folder here, we should have a AVI file. Let's just open that and set it to repeat. And then we can see our video sequence here. So quite like the camera blur at the beginning. How might we improve this? Let's just watch it through one time and then we can see how it all works out. Um, this, end, this beginning part I quite like, so I don't mind that. I do like the separation between the clouds and the planet. It really does look like the clouds are floating on top rather than them being stuck to the same surface because we gave it a bit more, um, we made the, the cloud globe or the cloud sphere a little bit bigger than the, the planet. And I, do, I think this uh, sort of highlight down the side here works quite well as well. I don't mind that. I think in the middle of this um, animation, this part here is pretty static so maybe we could have rotated slightly around at an angle and that would have casted less or more of a shadow and maybe we could have flown around the dark side of the planet so we could have moved the camera around this dark side um, maybe we should have done something like that but overall i'm pretty happy with it hopefully your one came out quite well uh, i think the, the spin um amount of this planet the the uh how can i say the um the rotation how much it's rotating rotating is is pretty good it's not too fast and it's not too slow i think that's just probably around the right sort of pace uh for this sort of duration it's roughly around what do we do uh, let's have a look we did 13 seconds in total um just under or just over 13 seconds so overall i'm pretty happy with the animation hopefully your one came out well if you do something nice then uh by all means send me a little link on the youtube comment i'd like to see your work as well if you're on Instagram, post it there and send me a link. Or you can also see these tutorials on Facebook. So feel free to share your work. It's nice to see what people come up with, what ideas you can come up with. What else could you do with this tutorial? What you could do is um, model the, the moon behind this. So you could have the planet Earth spinning here. Do some sort of animation sequence. You could fly the camera behind. And then maybe in the distance there's the moon. And you could fly to the moon and then rotate around that object. Uh, you could do lots of different things in here. We've done quite a lot of um, sort of sci-fi tutorials recently. So you could model a little spaceship and the spaceship could fly around the planet or fly around the edge or fly across the screen or something like that. You could do meteors flying. You could do loads of different things with this tutorial. So it's all down to your sort of imagination, right? So overall, I think it came out pretty well. I don't know what you think. Maybe leave a comment in the uh, YouTube or Facebook and let me know what you think about this tutorial. If you like it, maybe then I'll make some other ones. Maybe we'll model some sort of sci-fi type planet. Maybe we'll do something like that next. Or in a future tutorial, we'll create our own sort of material and um, our own map, our own custom map and do something similar like this. Okay, let's close this down. Let's close this down. That's the end of this tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.